China's DF-21, the world's first anti-ship ballistic missile, dubbed the carrier killer by defense analysts worldwide. With a range of 1,500 kilometers and a terminal velocity approaching Mach 10, it's designed to do one thing, sink American aircraft carriers before they ever reach a fight. The DF-21 entered service in 2010, and it fundamentally changed how the Pentagon thinks about carrier operations in the Western Pacific. With a range of 1,500 kilometers and a terminal velocity approaching Mach 10, it can theoretically strike a carrier strike group operating hundreds of miles from the Chinese coast. Here's what that coverage looks like. The DF-21's 1,500 kilometer range puts the entire Taiwan Strait and the Northern Philippine Sea within reach. That's overlapping coverage designed to push American naval power further from China's coast. What makes these systems particularly challenging is their mobility. Each DF-21 is mounted on a transporter erector launcher, an eight-wheeled vehicle that can deploy from hardened shelters, move to pre-surveyed launch positions, erect the missile to vertical, and fire within minutes. These aren't static installations you can target with preemptive strikes. They can disperse across China's eastern provinces and relocate after launch. It's a classic shoot-and-scoot capability that complicates American targeting at every level. But here's where the theory meets reality. A Nimitz-class carrier displaces over 100,000 tons and measures 1,100 feet long. It's powered by two nuclear reactors, driving the ship to speeds exceeding 30 knots. That's 35 miles per hour. These aren't lumbering targets sitting still in the ocean. They're constantly maneuvering, changing course, and operating with a battle group designed specifically to defend against this exact threat. From the moment a DF-21 launches, it needs between eight and 12 minutes to reach its target. In that time window, a carrier traveling at 30 knots can cover six to seven nautical miles. That's not the distance it travels in a straight line. That's the radius of possible positions it could occupy. You're looking at a 150 square mile uncertainty zone by the time the missile reaches terminal phase, and that creates a fundamental problem for the missile's guidance system. The missile launches on initial targeting data, likely from a satellite pass or over the horizon radar, that provides accuracy within 10 to 50 miles. Good enough to know where the carrier was, but not precise enough for a kinetic impact against a moving ship. During the boost phase and mid-course flight, the missile is above the atmosphere, traveling in a ballistic arc. It's moving fast, Mach 10 plus, but it's also blind. It can't adjust course based on real-time targeting because it's not receiving updates with the precision needed to hit a moving ship. Then comes the terminal phase, as the missile re-enters the atmosphere at hypersonic speeds, it creates a superheated plasma envelope around the warhead. This is a well-documented physics problem called ionization blackout. Radio communications are severed. The onboard radar can't see through the plasma. For 30 to 60 seconds during the most critical phase of flight, the missile is effectively blind. And U.S. carrier commanders know exactly when a ballistic missile launches. Infrared satellites detect the boost phase within seconds. That gives the carrier group the entire eight to 12 minute flight time to maneuver, deploy countermeasures, and position defensive assets. This is what's called the kill chain, and it has five critical links. First, initial detection. Satellite or over the horizon radar provides general location, but only within 10 to 50 miles. Second, precise targeting. Calculate the carrier's exact position and predict where it will be 10 minutes from now. Third, launch. The missile is committed to a ballistic trajectory based on those calculations. Fourth, mid-course updates. The missile needs constant refinement as the carrier continues moving. Fifth, terminal guidance. The missile must reacquire the target after re-entry and make final corrections in the last 30 to 60 seconds. Break any one of these links and the mission fails. Here's the smoking gun. Northern China, Gobi Desert. This is where China tests the DF-21. These are full-scale outlines of American aircraft carriers built in concrete and steel. Some are mounted on rails to simulate limited movement. You can see the superstructure, the flight deck dimensions. It's an exact replica. But here's what you don't see. Ocean currents, electronic warfare, defensive countermeasures, 
or a carrier moving at 30 knots while changing course unpredictably. They're shooting at stationary targets in the desert. China has never conducted a live test against an actual ship maneuvering at sea under combat conditions. These are controlled environments designed to validate the missile's performance under ideal circumstances, not the chaos of a contested maritime battle space. This is the capability they parade in Beijing and the capability they practice in a parking lot. This is what China's DF-21 is designed to achieve, a direct kinetic strike on an American carrier, catastrophic damage at hypersonic speeds. This is the capability they claim, but claiming it and proving it are two different things. Now contrast that with what the missile would actually face. A U.S. carrier doesn't operate alone. It's the centerpiece of a carrier strike group. This is a layered, integrated air defense network specifically designed to defeat ballistic missile threats. The primary defense against the DF-21 is the Standard Missile 6 and Standard Missile 3. The SM-3 can engage threats in the mid-course phase while the missile is still outside the atmosphere. The SM-6 handles terminal phase intercepts, engaging targets as they re-enter and maneuver toward the carrier. This is the intercept sequence. The Aegis combat system detects the launch via satellite alert. Radar begins tracking the inbound threat. Fire control calculates intercept geometry. The SM-6 launches from a vertical cell, climbs rapidly, and uses both onboard radar and data link guidance from the Aegis system to intercept the warhead during terminal phase. The missile doesn't need a direct hit. Proximity fusing detonates the interceptor close enough to destroy or disable the incoming warhead with fragmentation. These systems have been tested repeatedly against ballistic missile targets, traveling at speeds consistent with the DF-21's terminal velocity. Here's the practical reality. A destroyer carries 90 to 96 vertical launch cells. A cruiser carries 122. In a carrier strike group, you're looking at multiple ships, each capable of firing coordinated salvos of SEM-6 interceptors. The doctrine is simple. Ripple fire multiple interceptors per incoming threat. You don't fire one missile and hope for the best. You fire two, three, or four per target to ensure a high probability of kill. And because the U.S. detects the DF-21 launch within seconds, the carrier group has the entire 8 to 12 minute flight time to maneuver out of the predicted impact zone and coordinate defensive fires. That's not a scramble. That's a structured, rehearsed response with multiple layers of redundancy. The DF-21 isn't facing one ship with one chance to intercept. It's facing a networked battle group with overlapping fields of fire, electronic warfare jamming its terminal radar, and multiple opportunities to destroy it before it ever reaches the carrier. The U.S. Navy has been developing ballistic missile defense capabilities for over two decades. The SM-3 program began in the late 1990s. The SM-6 entered service in 2013 and has been continuously upgraded to counter threats like the DF-21. A typical carrier strike group operates with multiple Aegis-equipped ships. Each destroyer carries 90 to 96 vertical launch cells. Each cruiser carries 122. When you're talking about a carrier strike group with four or five Aegis ships, you're looking at several hundred interceptor missiles available for layered defense. That's overlapping coverage with multiple engagement opportunities against every incoming threat. That eight to 12 minute flight time is the fundamental asymmetry. China has to execute a perfect kill chain under contested conditions. The US has the entire flight time to detect, track, maneuver, and engage. One side needs everything to go right. The other side just needs one thing to go wrong. The DF-21 is a real weapon with real deterrent value. It complicates American operational planning, forces carriers to operate further from the Chinese coast. These systems aren't propaganda. They exist, they're deployed, and they're part of China's broader strategy to contest sea control in the Western Pacific. But Carrier Killer is a claim, not a proven capability. The kill chain is complex, the physics are unforgiving, and the U.S. Navy has spent two decades building layered defenses specifically designed to defeat this threat. China's missiles can reach a carrier, but reaching it and hitting it are two very different problems. And hitting it through a network defense designed to stop exactly this kind of attack? 
That's the capability China parades in public and practices against stationary targets in the desert.